Thank you for coming to worship and celebrate on Christ the King Sunday, and thank you for playing along with a little bit different uh, worship pattern and order, because today we celebrate the end of one church year and the beginning of the next, right? And I really like this service because uh, it, it, gives, it gives me an overview of the entire church year and the different meanings and some of the symbols and the colors of our season. And pretty soon we see a, a clear pattern emerging, right? We, we have the, we, we start over here, we've got the season, we've got the season of Advent, right? The promise and prophecy of a Messiah and a Savior. We got, we got white, what's this? Christmas, very good, all right? Coming to Jesus, birth of Jesus. What do we got? Epiphany? Yeah, this is the pop quiz portion, folks. All right. And we've got Epiphany, which is the light and the gift that Jesus' life is for all people. We, symbol, uh, we, we celebrate Jesus' baptism during that time as well. What do we got here? Lent and Good Friday. And uh, we're looking at the, the idea that following Christ will lead to the suffering sacrifice on the cross. Easter, nothing can keep us from the love of Christ or separate us from God, not even death. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump ahead, I'm going to steal a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of Bonnie's thunder, but, uh, but not too much. Uh, Pentecost, we have down here at the end, uh, that's empowered by the Holy Spirit, the church is called to live into the teachings and actions of Jesus Christ. And then what happens? Where do we go after this? We start all over again, right? We start the pattern once again. Advent, Christmas, Epiphany. And if I were to ask you what the point of patterns are, what would you say? Why do we have patterns? To remember? To know what comes next, yeah. I mean, you know, I know that's a big one for, for our altar guild. You know, we you know, we always what's coming next? Okay, this this color. You know, I put this out next. What else? Comfort. comfort. Yeah, and pattern patterns give you a level of comfort. Anything else? Direction. Huh? Direction. Direction. Yes, definitely. You know, it gives us. Give, it it kind of lets us. That, that ties into kind of Kathy's. You know, it lets us know what to get ready for. And I think, I, and I think if, if, if at, our, at our core, I wonder if we could say that patterns help us to know what to expect. For example, if I gave you the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, what comes next? If you look at our calendars and you look outside and you talk to Ned Stark, what do you know is coming? Winter. Patterns help us to get ready for what is coming next. So on Christ the King Sunday, what are we called to expect? What are we reminded of by the pattern of our church year? And I think it's tempting sometimes because I, I tend to go in the route where, where I, I'm expecting to go to Advent, to be honest. You know, I'm already, well, actually, I'm already planning for Lent. <laughs> that's, that's a whole other story. You know, I, the next thing, the next thing, right? And uh, uh, we kind of, patterns, in some ways, we, we, we tend to expect more of the same. And yet, I wonder if that is the point of this Sunday. Christ the King. Are we simply to expect more of the same? Another Advent, another year? Or are the seasons and the stories pointing us towards something bigger and better for us and for our world? Think about it. As we, as we read the Bible, we constantly hear a pattern and a truth about how God acts. All right, the, the Israelites are enslaved and mistreated in Egypt. What happens? God comes back for them. God frees them, right? All right, when the nation of Israel is conquered and destroyed and its people taken into exile in Babylon, what happens? God comes back for them. God comes back. 
This refusal to leave us alone, in a lot of ways, is the essence of the story of Jesus. All right? You remember that guy. Jesus was dead on a cross. All right? Super dead. Stabbed in the lung to make sure he was dead, and then buried in the tomb for three days. Against all expectations, all evidence and patterns of life as we know it, against the very laws of nature, Jesus rises from the grave for his disciples, for me, for you, and for the entire world. Jesus comes back. And this is good news. We are forgiven. We are saved. We will go to heaven when we die. And yet, is this where the pattern and promises of God's refusal to leave us alone ends? If Easter morning changes the way that we view death, then I believe that Christ the King Sunday is about changing the way we view life. <coughs> Anyone know how many times Jesus predicts his resurrection before he's crucified? How many times? Any guesses? Three. Three. Very good. Very good. Nice. Nice work. Nice work. All right. Now, for a tougher question, anyone know how many times Jesus promises us that he is coming back again for us to set us and the world right? At least nine different times in, in the Gospels. And if God comes back for the Israelites in Egypt, for the exiles in Babylon, for the disciples on Easter morning, what does it mean when God promises to come back for us and for our world? He's coming. And God's promises are good promises. This is great news. This is the gospel because we know all too well about loss, about abandonment, about suffer suffering through broken relationships, downsized jobs, divorce, disease, death, disaster. We know what it's like to be left. We know what it's like to be left alone. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ shows us a new pattern, a new way of living. And, and I want to share an image with you, all right? Because I know a lot of people, uh, you know, I've, I've seen this, this thing, you know, uh, uh, you know, Jesus is coming back and boy, is he angry. That's not the Jesus that I know. All right, this is the image that I have for, 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 uh, for, for Jesus' return. All right, most of you know that I have a, uh, 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 two dogs, uh, Baxter and Tortilla. They're 50-ish pound animals. Um, and and they, they spend most of their day sleeping. Right? And, and that's, that's normal for dogs. About 14 to 18 hours, I think it is. That's all. That's amazing. I would love to sleep for 14 to 18 hours. But with that, all right, my wife works four different jobs. All right? And so she comes home at various different times. Weird times. You know, one day it'll be 8 p.m., one day it'll be 4 p.m. And, and with that, I don't know how they do it, but the dogs will be sleeping dead out. And about 30 minutes, 45 minutes before, they start getting up and looking at the window. <clears throat> and they start wagging their tails, and they're looking at me. And then they start tearing to the door, and they jump at the door, and they whine at the door until I open it, and they run out like she's going to be there. She's not there. Oh, no. <sighs> you know, I go back in, I sit back down, I get back to work, and, and then, you know, about five minutes later, they're tearing around the house, jumping at the, you know, whining and pawing at me, and I go in and let them out again, and she's not there. On one hand, it's annoying. On the other hand, it's endearing. And towards the end, I often find myself getting caught up in their excitement, in their expectation. And by the end, I'm opening up the door, and I'm going out on the porch to see if I can see her coming. <laughs> And perhaps this is why we both end and begin the church year with Christ the King. 
the pattern of expectation that God will not leave us alone, that Jesus will come back for us. We, we have an invitation to get caught up in the excitement of God's impending rule, God's impending kingdom. Christ the King calls us to live our lives differently because of the patterns and promises of our God. This is why we can continue living despite the threat of war and terrorism, despite the threats of mass shootings, economic insecurity, and unexpected health crises. The Christian church, St. Peter's Lutheran Church, you and me, we are called to live in new ways and a new pattern of being envisioned by Jesus' words and actions. A life where the hungry are fed, the sick receive care, weapons are put down, and the outsiders and excluded are welcome into our communities. And you are living into this new life. Three years ago, a guy brought a gun into our church. Our response was not to arm ourselves in this place of worship. Thanks be to God. When our finances have been tight, and they have been over the past, I've heard that, our response is not to cut back on our giving to people and agencies who are in need and are serving the poorest of the poor. Thanks be to God. When we moved our church building, our response was not to abandon our old neighborhood in the East End. Two of our newest ministries, the Garden and our Outdoor Leadership Program, are both based in that old neighborhood. Thanks be to God. Your love and actions are changing this world. I want to end with a story. I can remember one of our volunteers with, with, with the Wells Outdoor Leadership Program uh, the first session that he was a volunteer, he confessed to me that he was nervous because we were so close to Persian Court. For those of you who don't know, it's a public housing project where uh, high rate of crime, high rate of violence. And this was in full daylight that he told me this. By the second session of volunteering, this same volunteer was hanging out in the parking lot <laughs> past dark talking, laughing, sharing, hanging out with kids. What had changed? Persian court hadn't. This volunteer got caught up in the promises and the patterns of God's kingdom. And it changed the very way that he lived. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.